Hi guys, welcome back to Through the Speakers. This is the third episode. I'm Taylor J. Williams. I've got a new co-host in Phil Beal. Hello, good to be here. And our third guest is Sophie Lee. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Hi. Hiya. <laughs> so let's start off on who you are. I'm Sophie. I play music. Um, I try and write songs. But my first couple of examples on Spotify don't show that very well. Um, oh, it's false voice. Don't put yourself well, down. Voice well, voice. I, I awesome. think I can do better. Okay, yeah. So looking back on them, I'm a bit like, oh, I don't, I'm not proud of that stuff because I've written so much better now. Oh. So that's the thought process behind it. Well, that's that bodes well for the future then because they're really good tracks, in my oh. opinion. And I'm looking forward to hearing the forthcoming material oh, oh. i've seen you perform what's going to be your next single i think haven't yeah, i what's that for called crying again? out loud for crying is. out loud brilliant yeah i'm really excited it's it changed a quite a, a little bit hasn't it from well what we've done yeah so a bit of context for anyone watching taylor's my drummer as well um so when i brought it to the band i was it was in my notes for like a year and then I was like, I've got this song. I'm not sure if it's any good at all because I just write songs like with me and an acoustic guitar. So they all just sound a bit stripped anyway. Sure. I brought it to the band and then I was like, I'll just play it and see what you think. And they were all like joining in. And as everyone started joining in, we were like, oh, actually, this is quite good. <laughs> That's a great moment, isn't it? It's yeah. a great moment when that happens. It really is. But luckily as well, it was one of those songs that I just like, you know, one of those songs that just write themselves like yeah. because obviously like you write songs as well so you'll know absolutely it was just written within like five minutes yeah i've got songs i've been working on for 10 years yeah and i can't finish them and yet then you start a new a new one which comes to you and it, it, it's 15 minutes flat isn't it it's yeah, done it's crazy i don't know if you've done this as well but i have like loads of half finished songs yes and then I put them together and it makes a full song. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and it never happens because I'm always like, oh, what can I do with this? <laughs> I forgot what the point was now. Sorry. Well, that's who you are, isn't it? You've just put it in a I nutshell. Forget. Really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you forget who you are. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so what have we been up to? Yeah, that would be my question, really, because we obviously spoke a while back. Yeah. In your first ever podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> my first time. All right, all right. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, what have you been doing this year since the turn of the year? Then. So, when we last spoke, what was I even doing? I think uh, Wish You Knew was just about to come out. I think because you played it was for it? us, didn't you? Yeah, you played one. It was yeah. either it, that interview. It, it was either it just came out or, was or just it about had. To. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. I just said the same thing twice. <laughs> so since then, I've kind of sloped off a little bit yeah because i wanted to make sure that this next thing i had coming out was like gonna be good yeah do you know what i mean yeah. um and i wanted to really work on like my stage presence while i was gigging as well because oh. i noticed that like watching back on videos i didn't have a, it didn't seem like i had a lot of confidence really so i wanted to like not just a gig but i wanted to make a performance for people Amazing. which when was the was the last weekend gig the weekend, the weekend that uh, I played? It's obviously culminated in that. Yeah, I had like a load of people come up to me after, and they were like, "Sophie, your confidence has improved so much." And I was like, "Well, that's what I've been doing, <laughs> so that's good." <laughs> How did it feel in the moment? It was really good. It um, felt that way to you, did it on stage? Yeah. Well, my thought at the start, like, because um, I was the headline that night, and I wasn't expecting that many people to be honest. So I just kind of like was oh well we'll just make the most of it so yeah. i just started jumping around like a lunatic <laughs> and i move quite stiffly so it didn't feel very natural but i was like oh well i look like a fish that's come out of water um <laughs> that's your pers pers perspective though isn't it and it didn't look like i, that I to, do to me. i do look like a stiff fish no you didn't it's like look... a corpse just wobbling <laughs> but um and then i think like the other band members picked up on that and then they were like, oh, she's moving. Maybe I should move a bit as well. You yeah, fling around like an octopus anyway, really. He was playing really. the drums standing up at one point. Yeah, yeah, he was. And then he nearly fainted after it. Yeah, 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 that sort of collapsed afterwards, didn't they? Uh, just a little bit, yeah. yeah. Just, just just a smidge. Yeah. Well, from a, from an audience perspective, it was fantastic. Thank it was you. the best I've seen you do. 
Thanks. Absolutely awesome. It was weird because I just looked up at one point and I was like, wait, where's everyone come from? But obviously, like, everyone from Jimmy's had come down to the ship and forecast right. after. That's right. And yeah. I was like, oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but everything, I think your communication was better. Yeah. I think you're speaking in between songs. It was mm. confident, you know. Yeah, I just really felt cool. more comfortable. I think it takes a while because before I joined Condo, I hadn't done any gigs at all really sure. so obviously the first few gigs are going to be a bit like oh i'm not too sure what of i'm course. doing yeah you're learning you learning your craft aren't you yeah of course you are absolutely that so, leads yeah no, sorry sorry man that leads actually got onto a good point man so be, it, before you'd signed to condo you hadn't really done a couple of uni gigs and stuff like that yeah but well, you went in uni before condo, yeah, well but college okay. gigs whatever else <laughs> yeah. um but why like obviously so you weren't really in the industry you hadn't really released anything why did you sign to condo why why w did when you got approached or you approached condo or whatever mm. else why did that push you to go on actually in the industry so the story behind me joining condo i don't know why but i saw like an ad like i think it was on someone's instagram story or something um and it was like we're accepting demos like just email them to the email address it was so i was just like oh why not because at this point in my life i was i think i was in college but i what i didn't feel like i was really doing anything with my life really? but i've always wanted to be in music since i can remember yeah. so i was like i want to like actually do stuff i just don't know how to like i didn't know how to get gigs i didn't know like how to put proper music out i'd put like demos out on on like soundcloud but it was literally just bedroom demos sure. so i was like what's the worst that's gonna happen and then weirdly enough i uh got an email from someone called Gemma at the label shout out to Gemma, we love her hey. and then she was like we'll bring you in for a meeting and talk about stuff and then i turned up here at condo and then roy was like peering at me through the window and he was like who is it? <laughs> I was like, Sophie, I'm here for a meeting. And he was like, you're 10 minutes early, you know. <laughs> and I was like, I, I like to turn up early. And he was like, right, well, I'm going to have to grab the keys from the back. And I was like, oh, God, what is going on? He'd have actually liked that. He would have yeah, liked the fact that you were 10 would. minutes early. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think we've been at, uh, you've ever been early since. <laughs> Harsh. We're, we're, we're cutting that bit out. <laughs> but yeah, and then since Condo, it has like made such a dramatic change on my career because I was literally, I'd be sat in my bedroom just learning like John Mayer on guitar, not doing anything with it. And then I joined Condo and it was like, here's your first headline gig for your first single that you've ever put out properly and you've sold it out. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And then it was just like one after another thing Fabulous. from like coming from nothing, yeah. just sitting in my bedroom doing nothing but like schoolwork yeah. to like yeah. doing all this wonderful stuff. It awesome. was really cool. Awesome. I've seen you in, your, in some of your Instagram posts refer to it, refer mm. to it as your fam, which I yeah. think is really, really lovely. Is that how you feel about it? Well, like condo is so weird because I don't normally get on with people like instantly. Right. So obviously I can like make small talk and like sure. talk to people, but sure. I don't connect with them straight away. It takes me quite a while. It takes people to get like get used to me first. And then I came into condo and it was just like really easy to connect with everyone. Wow, yeah. And it was really strange, but obviously it's a good thing. Sure. But yeah, I am. Um, it is a family, like... It feels that way, doesn't it? Yeah, like, even, like, new people that join, it's another one of them. It's someone that, like, connects really easily with everyone here. So, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. It's really nice. So, the, the, we, we're now two-thirds of the way through the year, aren't we? Almost three-quarters of the way through the year. Mm. So, how's the rest of the year looking? Because from what I've seen, it's looking pretty busy. Yeah, so, What's I... Up for you? I am um, teased it a little bit before, but I've got a new single coming out. At some point, can't reveal when yet, okay. but it's called For Crying Out Loud. It is, it's been compared to a Shrek song, which is nice. <laughs> okay. Um, it's like an upbeat. I heard echoes of punk. I wouldn't when say I, when punk. I heard you play it. Um, it's not like pink. 
No. I'd say it's like... No, I'm talking the way I Fezzy vibes. Yeah, the, the way I see it is every summer you'd have that one song that, like, is the summer anthem. Mm. Like, that's what this song sounds like to me. It's like that one song that you remember every single summer. Like, you still listen to, like, the summer anthem of, like, 2014, and you go, oh, my God, remember that song? This is what's up, that like the feel of this Brilliant. song it's a little bit past summer now but yeah it'll but... be it'll be the autumn song <laughs> for sure or the winter song or whenever <laughs> it gets released yeah it's i don't know it's just like an upbeat catchy tune um yeah what, what? it's an angry song is it which oh, okay, i really yeah. like i like write an angry music yeah because it's some of my best work is like angry stuff okay so um yeah that's interesting yeah okay who do you listen to that does that um i just like like i'm really into crawlers yeah because holly minto's voice is like so it's like really empowering and she like because it's like that shouty vocal yeah it makes you feel exactly what she's feeling right, yeah. which is something in for crying out loud that i really like because the chorus i like pretty much like shout it yeah cool skunk and nancy <laughs> yeah skunk and nancy yeah have you, have you listened to their stuff no give it a go <laughs> you'll love it if you like angry woman music that's right you'll have to send me that right info. yeah definitely yeah. i will i'll copy you in for sure what else have we got coming up in gigs, the couple of gigs i do shows. i'm playing leeds for the first time that in is so exciting the end of october supporting my little friends on the label the glass skies hey, yeah, i'm really excited yeah, yeah. the like the lineup for that is really good as well yeah it is i've really seen good. a couple of those bands playing they're really good so i'm excited yeah, to see them really again. it's the first time we've played at the on the same bill as the glass guys isn't it right yeah i think so yeah yeah, it, yeah. A, we're, we're dead we, good mates with them. But oh, yeah, we're well aware of that, absolutely. Very yeah. rarely get to see each Me other. Me and John yeah, have the this... weekend, you would play at different locations, weren't you? Yeah, Probably. I know. Yeah, it's right. It's Me and John goes, have this, yeah. like, inside joke where, like, if we ever play together, the world will explode because it's been doing so much <laughs> to keep us apart. <laughs> so hopefully this gig is just going to, like, fly off the handles. You'll have to guest on his set. Oh, ask, him, ask, him, well, ask him to give you a... I'm oh, sorry if I let something out of the bag there. Maybe. That, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. What else? So are yeah, so you've got that one. You've got uh, a, you, you're on the you're on the bill of a single release next Friday. Mm. Who's that for? So that is the Dreams Region. Dreams gig. Region. That's I right. Think. Yeah. Is this interview going out? Oh. Yeah, this will be after. Oh, well, gig, okay, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But in a general sense, you, you've, you've just you've... played the Dreams Region gig. How does that feel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, no, but in a general sense, you, you, it's busy now. It's getting busier for you. It is. I've is got great. loads of gigs lined up. Yeah, the 29th as well. Yeah, at Future Yard. Um, I'm going to be there. Like, huh? I'm going to be there. Oh, yeah, you are. For sure, yeah. That's a student special showcase, which is nice because I've just got into second year. Hey, wonderful. Didn't think I was going to get in, but whatever. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, and there's some... There's some pretty good bands on that lineup as well. There's Paint Me in Colour. Yeah. Which I've seen them play once before. I haven't seen them. You went. No, no, no yeah. I, I went on my yet. own because someone was in work. But that was really fun. I made some friends there. So I was like, oh, well, I didn't really feel like I was on my own. And then there's this girl called Naila. I think that's how you pronounce Naila. it. Naila. I'm not too sure. But she looks really good as well. So I'm sure. excited to see her play. Really looking forward to that night, actually. Yeah. <laughs> really am. So, yes, yeah, so I was looking through your your Spotify profile mm. and there's something quite quite interesting on there because you made a, a big point of saying uh, on your profile how passionate you are about uh, spreading awareness for, for people's mental health yeah I was just in, intrigued as to what where that comes from and why you made such a you know such, okay. a, such a point of, of doing that so I think everyone no matter sorry no matter who you are or if you're a musician or not has had some experience with bad mental health before. So whether it's someone close that's been affected by it or themselves or whatever, True. because I always write based on what's going on in my head and like the way I feel and stuff like that. Um, obviously I firsthand have experienced how it like affects like even just like day to day life. Like there was a part of my life that I was like constantly just depressed. Really? Like when I joined Condo, I was like actually just like, Oh, depressed wow. is well can yeah. i swear on this no 
to Presta's uh, book. <laughs> and okay, then. I'm getting a heads up, so there oh. you go. He can go beep. <laughs> um, but it's just, like, tricky. I've always struggled with, like, anxiety as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, whether it's, like, panic attacks or, like, just social anxiety, it's always affected me. And it's weird because it pops up out of nowhere. And it's not something that you can explain a lot of the time. It's just, like... This is just what my brain does. I completely relate to that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter who you are. If you dig deep enough, you've got some experience with it. That's right. And so I think it's something that everyone can relate to. Yes. Which is why I try and like, because I'm quite passionate for like trying to help people as well. I'm not a therapist or anything. But Music is therapy though. Yeah, it is. Do you think it's therapy for you? It is, definitely. Like, there's been times, so I've had, like, therapy on, like, the NHS and stuff. Have you really? Tried, like, all stuff like that. Yeah. And the, like, obviously the NHS is really good and it helps a lot of people, but the lack of, like, decent resources for people out there is so strong that it's, like, we just have to help each other out. Like... That's absolutely right. If, like, professionals can't... Yes, like, because obviously not everyone can afford, like, private therapy and stuff that's as well. That's right, that's right. So we all just have to be there for each other, really. Yeah. And that reaching out to help somebody else is often yeah. the start of their, their healing, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. there's been times that I've been in, like, really low moods. And the only thing that's got me through it is music. Absolutely. Like, there's this one album by a band called Turnover. Um, and it's called Peripheral Vision. And all of the songs on that album are, like... um. Uh, they're not about depression i don't think but it's about having like a low mood um and i don't think the singer has depression or anything he just experiences like the low mental health sometimes sure and that's like the one thing that has always helped me through yeah absolutely and writing it out helps doesn't it i think as well yeah definitely if you have that facility then get it on the page yeah yeah, it just it's, again, it's all steps towards getting better, isn't it? I think. Yeah. And if you can write something and then create a song from it, you can help other people because people say, "I'm not on my own here." Yeah, definitely. It's really, really powerful. I think something for me as well. I have like I don't know if either of you have noticed it, but when I talk, sometimes I can't get my words out properly. Yeah. Like I, I don't think it's a stutter exactly, but I just, I don't Please, know if it's uh, like because of my, I'm from like a Chinese origin, so I can't say some words properly or something. <laughs> I've thought about that as well. But yeah. whatever it is, singing helps me get my point out a lot better yeah, because amazing. it's this is scripted. So it's like you say exactly this on that and beat. everyone will understand. Yeah, exactly. that's right. But it's on that beat as well, exactly. isn't it? So you've got so, me to go on. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's absolutely right, isn't it? That's amazing. So I, I'd never thought of that. You know, Writing down stuff when I am emotional, because that's where a lot of my best songs come from as well, is like when sure. I'm, I don't know what to say about it. But I just have to like write a song about sure, it. Do you know what sure. I mean? Absolutely. I'm sorry. I've been hogging the interview, mate. It's Thank fine. Thank you for it, that, though. That's really interesting. It's it? fine. It was a, a really good. Con- it was like it was n- nice to just sit here and listen, t- <laughs> listen, listen to, to it. Me um, but <laughs> we're running out of time. We haven't got very much long left. Keep the interview going, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it going. Well, you've got your quick fire round, haven't you? <laughs> I've got some it questions. Point, I've got what some point, questions what points, to ask mate? you. <laughs> There's no right answers. <laughs> uh, it was supposed to be six, but I've asked, asked some of them in the interview anyway. So it's going to be five now. What is the hardest thing about being an artist? People's opinions, because you're always worried about what people think, whether they'll like you, because that is the whole music business. It's getting people to like you so you can get shared to other people. And is this meant to be like timed? No. Okay, because I'm like Russian. I don't know why. Um, yeah, just getting people to like you really and liking the stuff that you're putting out there because you're so vulnerable when you put it out as you well. You really are. <laughs> You've just exposed your whole soul. Exactly. You? Like if somebody comes and says, "Go, oh, that last thing was rubbish." And no, then you're like, "Oh, <laughs> done it for nothing." <laughs> What's the difference between playing solo and playing with a band? Solo is scarier, I'd say. It's just you up there. With well, when I play, it's just a little guitar, and you have to entertain the whole crowd by yourself. It's a lot more intimate, I think, which is nice. But with a band, I prefer playing with a band because you've got people to back you. It adds the energy because they've already got lots more to see, 
and it's just vibes in it. You just like chill is, with your band. I think that when you it's all love. when it's like a, like that Friday on the weekend, uh, mm. you, it it looked like you were surfing the wave. You know, it's all their energy going through through you, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. How fabulous! Favorite cover to play. <sighs> Great question. Any catfish song ever. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite original to play? Ooh. I'm thinking of one or two. See, because I'm still writing new stuff, I've got a few like new stuff coming out. Um, but maybe... I just like for crying out loud. I was going to say, I thought you were going to say Lovely. fake it. It's just like anthemic and it just makes me happy, but also angry. Right, and final <laughs> one. One piece of advice that you would say to a new upcoming artist. Um, How do I word this? I forgot what I was thinking. Don't try and be what other people expect because otherwise you'll just be boring. Just be yourself and, like, don't worry too much about shit. Oh, no, that's great. Just, that's great advice, isn't it? Yeah, just be do yourself. it for yourself so crucial, instead yeah. of for yeah. other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Write songs you love, yeah. whether or not anybody else does. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. If you love something, absolutely. it shows a lot more than you writing something for someone else. Yes, absolutely right. Bangles. Well, it's been amazing speaking to you. Thanks. Probably gone about half an hour over. <laughs> I love talking. <laughs> but make sure everybody likes, subscribes, follows our Instagram, hits the bell, everything else. You go over like... to the website for ear follow. Big ear. Go over to the website www.bigcondorecords.co.uk. If you're a band artist in the music industry in any way, shape, or form, make or sure just you, a pleb like me. Make sure you give us a message. Uh, if you've played with us more than three times, that's just the thing we asked for, for for this podcast. I've been Taylor J. Williams. Come and follow me at taylorj.music uh, on Instagram and every other platform. I've been Phil Phil Beal, and I'm on phil.beal.71 on Instagram. Please follow me. And I've been an absolute legend. Hey, <laughs> so and where can we find you? <laughs> um, Sophie Lee with two S's, two L's and two I's all over the internet. Fantastic. I am there. Well, I hope to see everybody uh, next week. And this has been the third episode of Through the Speakers. Hey, see ya. Over and out. Cool. Ta -da -da -da. Feel a little out of sorts Everything is just too much Feeling trapped inside Lately I just wanna Happiness